welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and today's episode is called Experience All Four Types of Invocations. This episode is sponsored by my book and audiobook, the number one Amazon bestseller called Instant Divine Assistance, your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. Just go to Amazon and search for Instant Divine Assistance or click the link in the show notes. I publish both audio and video versions of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive, so take your pick. The video versions are on my YouTube channel called Benjamin Bernstein Podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to Awaken, Heal, and Thrive wherever you get it. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the link in the show notes for a free chance to win a full year of my Awakening Plus online membership. That's a $189 value, and I announce a new winner every month. I drop new episodes of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive around the 9th and 23rd of each month. So let's get into this episode. The invocations I talk about in my book break down into four basic categories. There's an invocation for embodied awakening. There's one for healing. There's one called the hollow read invocation where you flow highest good energy to others. And then there's another one called a custom invocation where you call in whatever kind of energy you want. We cover all four in this very special episode. This is basically a presentation I did last week uh, for a beat up group online and it runs about 90 minutes and uh, you actually get to experience all four invocations. I don't just talk about them. I lead you through them. And uh, there were about 75 people on the call. So the collective energy of the recording is really strong. And uh, this is an episode, once you get into it, you'll definitely want to give it your full attention. So not one to do while you're driving, but one to actually sit down, uh, set aside 90 minutes and give it your attention. And then you'll get some awesome benefit, most likely. I will note this is similar to a previous episode of this podcast I put out back in February of 2023. The title of that episode was Deep Dive Experiential Invocation Presentation. It did cover some of the same territory. However, that was an audio-only podcast. This one is also a video. Uh, the audio quality of this new one is much higher, and there's a whole slew of questions and comments on this that definitely were not on the previous. So, uh even if you did that last episode, this is like a significantly new and improved version of similar content. So that should be enough of an intro. Let's segue into the recording of that event. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Healing Energy Circle tonight. We have a special guest, Benjamin Bernstein from Asheville, North Carolina. He's also written a book about what he's going to do tonight. It's a, uh, I believe it's a bestseller on Amazon. So he's going to tell you more about it, and he's going to lead us through some invocations tonight, and I'm going to turn it over to Benjamin. Okay, thank you, Carlo. And uh, thanks to, I, I really appreciate being invited to pre present on this group. Um, we've actually made this a joint event. This is also an event in my um, Awakening Plus membership. It's a free public event. So all kinds of, I see we've already got over 50 people online, and more will probably be coming in. So uh, let me just give a little brief intro on myself in case you're new to me. Again, my name is Benjamin Bernstein. And um, the things I do very quickly, uh, individually, I do astrology readings, I do shamanic healing, and I'm a life coach. I have a membership called Awakening Plus, and uh, I like to help people there. The individual services are at astroshaman.com. The um, the membership is at awakeningplus.com. That's awakeningplus.com. Uh, the book he mentioned has a 15 word title. So listen carefully. <laughs> it's called Instant Divine Assistance, Your Complete Guide to Fast and Easy Spiritual Awakening, Healing and More. And it the week it launched, it did hit number one in 11 Amazon categories. It's been selling strongly ever since. It's in all formats. It's a paperback, a hardback. It's an ebook. It's an audio book. So whatever format you like, it's available in that form. And like it says, it's just a it, it, the invocations we'll be doing tonight, basically this event tonight is a really concise version of the book. Um, the most critical uh, types of invocations from there, we're going to do them all tonight in this 90 minute window. Um, so that's the key stuff. Um, you can learn more about me at those uh, links that I mentioned and uh, we'll be interactive. Mostly it'll be me presenting. Uh, but we will take bits here and there when we've done a process to get a little brief period for pe people to ask questions or ask comments, or make comments rather. All right. So I'd like to begin uh, just by briefly setting the energy field. Uh, I normally do this in a more involved manner, but I have, I'm going to do this as a shortcut. 
So I now ask all of my beautiful divine allies of high vibration and benevolent intent to come now. Thank you. Allies, please create a safe, sacred container to hold in this beautiful energy and to ensure that all that enters here is of high vibration and benevolent intent. Thank you. So it is. Okay, there's a good container. All right. And if anyone here would like to invite any additional allies, as long as they are of high vibration and benevolent intent, you're welcome to invite your allies in to support us. So We'll leave just a minute for anyone else to call in their allies, just, you know, silently. Feeling good. We'll leave a moment longer for additional allies to join us. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Okay, um, whoa, <laughs> that feels good. Uh, by the way, what we just did is not required to do these invocations. The invocations are completely self-contained, but since we're doing a big group event, I wanted to uh, to set a good energetic container before we started. Uh, let me briefly tell you how I got these invocations in the first place. Over 12 years ago, I was in an ayahuasca ceremony, and uh, out of nowhere in the ceremony, these invocations simply dropped into my head. Mother Ayahuasca just gave them to me, and she showed me, hey, you can call in Embodied Awakening by just saying a few words and receiving it. And she said, not only that, you can call in your own healing. If you got something that's healing physically, emotionally, whatever, just call it in and relax and your higher self to do that for you too. Um, and since then, having developed these for over 12 years, I now have developed invocations, or maybe I've been inspired, might be more accurate, uh, invocations where you can call in literally any flavor of energy you want through a custom invocation. And you can also do what's called a hollow read invocation, where you can be a conduit for highest good energy to other beings. So uh, that's the four basic varieties of invocations. Now, there are, you know, subtypes, especially within the healing invocation. There's actually four versions of that. We're not going to do all those tonight. But by the end of this evening, after these 90 minutes, you'll have a very good sense of how these work. And hopefully you'll have had a direct and helpful experience of the energy. What is the guiding principle of all these invocations is your higher self does them for you. And, and let me just define basic terms. A higher self, you know, my experience is that each human has one level up their higher self, which is their spiritual part, the part that continues through incarnations, et cetera. And it's set up the human lifetime. It's dropping hints to you that we call intuition. It's flowing energy to keep your human part alive. And this part, is willing to do so much for you. And most of us don't even ask. And what you're going to experience tonight, hopefully, is that when you ask your higher self to merge with you and give you a deeper embodied awakening experience, it'll do that immediately. And if you've got something out of sorts in you and you ask it to heal it, it'll do that immediately. That's why the book is called Instant Divine Assistance. It literally comes immediately. Now, it, it may need a little while to run, but the instant arrival is what the title refers to. Um, I'm also going to make a request, um, whether you're uh, live on this or whether you're watching a replay of it, I'm asking you to please be fully present, pretend you're right here in the room with me, with the same level of attention and focus, because we are co-creating this space together. Uh, everyone who's participating live or on the recording is actually affecting the energy of everybody else. So please, if you're here, please be fully present the very best you can. Uh, if for any reason you need to leave, the, the the process while we're in it, just ask the beautiful divine allies, hey, just kind of slip me out of the field nice and easy, and they will be happy to do that. You won't disrupt anything if you have to leave early. But uh, we have found through years of experience in our Awakening Plus membership that the full, you know, and fully engaged presence of the participants really makes a big difference. So I do request that from you guys. Okay, so let's start with the most foundational invocation of the bunch, the Embodied Awakening Invocation. Uh, and let me just define terms a little bit here. Now, when some people think of spiritual awakening, they think, oh, I'm all spaced out. I'm out of my body. I'm floating around in the ethers and I'm all blissed out. And there's kind of an assumption, that, oh, I'm not very functional if I'm there. Uh, the difference between that and embodied awakening is you're fully present in your body. Instead of you leaving your body to go hang out in the higher realms, your higher self comes to you right there. And 
in embodied awakening, you're actually more functional and you're more capable and having a better time in your human experience than otherwise. In fact, uh, what characterizes embodied awakening are several things, four of them actually. First, when you're there, you have more harmony, flow, ease, and grace. Everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly and more joyfully. Instead of having to figure things out so much, your intuition works way better and you just know what to do increasingly. And finally, there's this full body euphoria that lights up. And most people think that all sounds pretty good. And hopefully you'll experience that tonight. So that's some of the uh, benefits of doing it. Um, the, the process of doing it is actually very straightforward. Uh, metaphorically, it's like, think of your physical body like a car. Your ego is going to move from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. Your higher self is going to drive. However, it only does so with your ego's permission. Uh, if your ego, for any reason, does not like how your higher self is driving, uh, it can instantly be right there behind the wheel. The higher self immediately steps out with no fuss and says, all right, you got it back. No problem. So it's very important. We may have parts of us that are a little scared or concerned about giving up control of our body to our higher self. But just know that this is instantly reversible. You can try it on if for any reason you don't care for it. Just like that, you, everything's back like it was. So there's no danger to try. It's perfectly safe. And what's coming in is your own higher self. You know, the, the very part of you that created your human self in the first place. And that only wants the best for you. So that's how that works. Okay, so let's experience it. Uh, I will guide you now through the process. Uh, please, um, I'm going to assume as we do this that I do have your full attention. I'm going to assume it's safe for you to close your eyes and be fully present. If that's not the case, be safe above all. <laughs> so assuming that's true, uh, please close your eyes and just feel your body. Just experience the overall feeling of the physical body. And if you have awareness of your energy body, the part you call prana or chi or life force or whatever, feel that too. If you can't feel it, it's fine. Just uh, feel the body alone if you can't. So now you should be having the awareness of the current state of your physical body, just the energy vibe and the energy body if you have awareness of that. That's your baseline. And you're going to kind of just note this. And then later we'll compare if it feels different because of what we're doing. Okay. All right, uh, I recommend keeping your eyes closed. The brain is wired over 50% for vision. So if your eyes are open, you just lost most of your inner awareness. So if it works for you, keep your eyes closed if you can. All right, so we're just about ready to speak to our higher self. We're gonna do an eight word invocation. You are gonna be addressing your higher self directly. I'm now going to preview the words you're gonna say. This is not the real deal and you don't have to memorize it, but just so you know what's coming. What we're about to say in a minute is the words maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. Okay, so let's do it for real if you're willing. So do this out loud if you can, silently if you must. So here we go, speaking to your higher self. Maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. Now let the words go and just relax into passivity. So you may already be feeling energy moving. What happens is it's kind of like you're a sponge and your higher self is water just soaking in through the top of your head. So if you have awareness of that, just feel that passively. If you do not feel that, that's okay. Just feel your breath come and go if that's the case. So feel energy if you can. Otherwise, feel breath come and go. Please, no breath control. Let the breath do what it wants. We're very, very passive here. So as this happens, next, if at any point you get distracted, which simply means your attention is anywhere other than feeling the sensation, um, once you've noticed that, simply return to feeling the sensation very gently and persistently. Please don't fight the distraction. Don't try to change it. Don't mess with it at all. That would only strengthen it. So just return your attention to feeling energy or breath. And if the distraction is still there in the background, that's not a problem. Let it be there. No problem. Just put focus on the sensation the best you can. The final thing you can do if you want is to discover how little effort is needed even to feel this energy or breath. 
I call this the minimum effort game. Let's start the game by dropping to no effort at all. I mean, literally drop to zero. And whatever happens is fine. So don't even try to feel anything now. Just zero effort. Chill out completely for a minute. Let it all go. And unless I'm mistaken, a whole bunch of you just went into embodied awakening. <laughs> All right, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So if at zero effort, you still have awareness of energy or breath, then zero is the perfect amount of effort for this. If at zero, you have lost awareness of energy or breath, then I want you to add back just barely enough effort to feel it again. The idea obviously is to use the absolute minimum effort needed to feel what's happening. The less effort you use, the more space you leave for your divine self to help you. Good. And based on when I when I lead a process like this, I catch the vibe of what the group is experiencing, both live and on the recording afterward. And it feels like most of you are here. So let me now tell you how you would know if you hit embodied awakening. There's a four point checklist. And if you can say yes to all four, you're there. So the points are there is no mental chatter. There's no challenging emotion. It's peaceful and it's effortless. It's literally holding itself. Once again, that's no mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful and effortless. So just note, is that all true for me right now? So if you're all the way there, fantastic. Um, if you just got a little improvement, we'll take that too. Um, awakening is not like an on-off switch. It's more like a dimmer control. So even some movement toward that is welcome. Keep doing it. You'll get better at it. So, um, so note, um, if you meet all those criteria of embodied awakening or how far you've gotten. And now the next phase of this process is to actually open your eyes and look around the space you're in. Eyes open. We're still in the process but please open your eyes and kind of look around a bit. Now the question is, are you still in embodied awakening with your eyes open? And most of the time I've let thousands of people through this. Most people say, yep, it's still their eyes open. And the whole idea here is that it's supposed to be. The whole point, it's embodied awakening. It's not just an eyes closed space out kind of thing. It's designed to stay with you all day. Okay. Um, and if you, so note uh, now, Compare how you feel right now to how you felt when I had you check in before we started the little invocation. Um, so now I will um, remind you again what the benefits are of embodied awakening. So I'm repeating what I said earlier. There's more harmony, flow, ease, and grace. And you should be able to feel that now differently. Uh, everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly and more joyfully. Your intuition works better, so you don't have to think as much. And note if you have that full body euphoria too. That kind of nice feeling in the whole body is there. Another subtle thing is you, if you're in embodied awakening, the consciousness hearing me right now is a little bit different than the consciousness that we started with. If your higher self is really driving, there's a it's subtle, but you can tell it's I'm the perceiver is not quite the same. My consciousness has shifted a bit. So if your higher self is there with you, then it's actually what I'm talking to right now. But it's it's kind of a higher self human blending it's a hybrid kind of thing now is this as good as it gets not by a long shot even if you're if you met all my criteria my experience of awakening is it is an infinite progression i've had so many awakenings over the years uh my current belief is there's just no end to it if it's an infinite universe how could there ever be a final awakening <laughs> so my motto has become it always gets better than this Okay, I'd like to uh, leave a moment for any questions or feedback. Again, I have to limit because we only have 90 minutes to cover four processes. Uh, I can't spend a whole lot of time on this, but if anyone, let me make sure that unmute, yep, unmuting is available. So, and let's do this by talking instead of typing, please. So if you're on the call live and you have a quick question or comment, uh, just jump in, unmute yourself and, uh, and just speak. Please don't raise a hand, just jump in and, and talk if you want to do that. Okay, Bridget, hi. 
Hi. What if you don't sense anything different or feel anything different at all? Does it mean you're you're still there? Uh, you mean the starting state and the state after the invocation don't feel any different? Right. Yeah. Well, either you were already an awakening to start with and there was nothing to improve on, or it was not effective for you, one or the other. Hmm. Um, it's really important after you do it to be completely passive and truly because any effort, any trying to make it happen shuts it down. Mm -hmm. So if if you are not completely passive, it it kind of runs interference with your higher self doing it for you. So I don't know if you were fully passive or if you were even subtly trying to make it happen, but that's sometimes why it, you, people don't have a strong experience at first. I, I thought I was, but, you know... Um... I suppose maybe I did something wrong and didn't realize it. Oh, it's not a right or wrong thing. It's just something you get better at over time. Well, let me just ask right now, are you experiencing mental chatter? I don't think so. Okay. Are you currently experiencing any challenging emotions? Just a little bit of frustration. That, oh, because you don't think yeah. you made it there? Okay. Um, right. Do you, do you feel peaceful? Um. Overall, yes. All right, so just for a sec, just go to zero effort, would you? Just relax okay. and just be for a minute. I felt you just go there. I might be, so let's run the list now. At this moment, is all the following true? No mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful, effortless. Did we check all the boxes? Yes. You're there. Well done. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> okay. Good okay, job, Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just need a little boost. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Let's move on to our next process then, okay? So um, I'm going to save the healing invocation for last. So um, uh, I will explain, though, that the embodied awakening and healing invocations are like the two bread and butter workhorses of this process. There's the two. If you only did two of them, those would be the two. And I'll explain more about that later. But I want to do the more obviously enjoyable ones first to get you all excited about them, okay? So next, I want to teach you about the custom invocation. So let me explain that the invocations are, are simply a formula. And the formula is maximum fill in the blank that serves highest good please. So already we've done maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good please. Now I'm going to have you fill in the blank with any energy you want more of. So again, to be clear, what we're calling in is an energetic shift. This is not law of attraction. You're not calling in a Rolls Royce or a yacht or anything like that. So you could call in more maximum peacefulness, maximum vitality, maximum you know, whatever, uh, whatever energy you want more of, maximum creativity, um, whatever you want more of, you can literally call it in and fill it up. It's like, imagine a, a, a thousand beer handles, like it's a big old bar up there and they can pull any bar handle they want and that exact flavor comes out and pours into you. So, um, so what I need you to do now is just take a moment and and feel how you feel and just decide, okay, what one flavor of energy do I want more of right now? So I'm going to give you a few seconds to decide the flavor you want. Okay. So, so when I say fill in the blank in the invocation, that's when you plug in the word of what you're asking for. Again, the idea is your higher self has all those energies available and it's going to flow in exactly the type you're asking for when the invocation functions. All right. So right now, um, first, again, to monitor the effectiveness of what we're doing, we're going to rate zero to 10 how much of that energy you have right now. So whatever energy you're choosing, feel into your current state. And zero would be I don't feel any at all of what I'm asking for. Ten would be I'm already maxed out. So um just give a zero to 10 of how much of the energy you're about to request you already have. So just feel and, and assign a number zero to 10. Okay. So now let's call it in. Again, you're speaking to your higher self. So again, out loud if you can, silently if you must. Maximum, fill in the blank, what you're asking for. That serves highest good, please. Again, that was that serves highest good, please. And let the words go. You don't repeat them. You say them once and, and relax. Once again, the follow-up is exactly the same as before. Go passive, relax. 
Don't in any way try to make it happen. Don't in any way try to help. Just be fully open and relaxed and let your higher self give it to you. And it will be coming in the top of your head and filling your body in whatever way is appropriate for the type of energy you have requested. So relax, be passive, and just let yourself be filled up. As it comes in, it's a, metaphorically, it's like a, you're filling up the tank. And as long as you have a sense of incoming energy, it's still coming in. If at some point you feel like, I feel like I've hit equilibrium, no more is coming in. I'm a, it's a kind of in a stasis. That means your higher self has given you as much as you can hold. It will never give you too much, but it'll give you as much as you can hold for highest good. So relax and just let yourself be saturated. Just a moment longer, give everyone a chance to uh, be filled. Yeah, I'm I'm getting a sense of fullness, so I'm sensing most of you are are topped off, and and that's all there is to that one. That one's really simple. You just ask for what you want, relax, let it fill you up, and uh, it comes. So once again, let's get some quick feedback. Anyone who has a question or comment about what just happened would love uh, feedback or questions about what you just got by your request. Carlo, well, Benjamin, yeah. Can you do that every day? And can you ask for something different every day or the oh, same thing over and over again? You can do it all day long. You can ask for whatever you want. No limits. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you. there's no limit to how often you do invocations. You can do whichever ones you want as often as you like. Yeah. Good question. Uh, Mark has typed, Benjamin, is it possible to ask our higher self to act as something as simple and functional as our alarm clock, reliably waking us up full of energy at 5 a.m., say, instead of subconscious programming, the wake up before going to sleep? Um, you can try. <laughs> uh, that's, in my opinion, a bit risky. Um, so you can certainly try that. What I would do is um, to test that, just to be super safe, you know, set an actual alarm for like... Uh, five minutes after you're asking your higher self to wake you up. And if after a few days you're consistently getting awakened at your requested time, that's showing that your higher self is reliable for that. Um, what I've learned from my own higher self is it will do things for me that are actually aligned with highest good stuff. But if I ask it for input or help with something it really doesn't care about, that doesn't really matter in terms of my higher self, it may not participate. So, um, whether the, it wants to act as an alarm clock, you'll have to test that and see. <laughs> uh, Catherine says, that was incredible. I was ready to fall asleep before and ask for vitality. Now I have all kinds of energy. Wow, awesome. I'm so glad to hear that, Catherine. Yeah, it's amazing how just instantly you can shift energy just by asking for what you want. I yourself is really good at that. Okay, any other quick questions or feedback before we jump to the next thing? And I guess it is okay to type in the chat. I was thinking verbal is good, but... Uh, People can type in the chat with questions or comments as well, and I'll, I'll catch them up the best I can. All right, let's go to the next one. Now we're going to do the hollow read invocation. Uh, this could easily be called the pipeline invocation or conduit invocation. I like to pun on that. I say, I conduit. <laughs> so this is where you flow to others. So in this one, uh, I recommend doing this first for someone you have good feelings towards, someone you love or you like. So for starters, um, think of someone you would like to flow energy to. So I'll give you a moment to decide who that is. And you do not need their permission for reasons I'll explain in a moment. So hopefully you've chosen someone. Um, so here's how it works. Um, the... Again, we're not going to do it for real yet, but what you're going to say is, um, spirit that I am, please flow the energy through me for name of person's highest good. Here's the deal. When you do just a highest good flow, your higher self immediately connects to their higher self and the higher selves work out between the two of them exactly what needs to come through. The cool thing about this is your ego does not need to specify anything beyond highest good energy. That means in real time, as soon as that energy starts flowing, 
Uh, your higher self and their higher self will keep collaborating and they'll determine, okay, what color is needed? What levels does it need to be coming from? Do we need to bring in some other divine beings to help out here? All the details, all the nuances are automated as far as the human is concerned. You don't have to worry about any of that. And your higher self can flow energy way better than your human self. It's, it's just, they, they're so much more capable and they're, they're much more conscious of everything that's happening. So, um, and also if for some reason, the amount of highest good energy that person should receive from you is zero, then nothing will flow. Uh, so my belief is that there is no permission needed because if you're all if you're asking for is highest good and the higher self is running it, then there's no harm that can come to that person. There's no karmic interference happening. It's totally cool to do this. Okay. So if you're just asking for highest good, you're in the clear. So uh, that's what we're about to do. So you've picked the person and uh, and I want you once again to check in how you feel before we start because I want to do it before and after again. So uh, take a moment and feel your current energy. How does my body and energy body feel? Just to kind of check in on that and note. Okay. All right. So again, speaking to your higher self, repeat after me out loud if you can, silently if you must. Spirit that I am, please flow the energy through me for recipients, plug their name in there, highest good, to the greatest extent that serves highest good. Starting now, thank you. Let all the words go, and once again, just be completely passive. Just relax. You, the human, are not doing it. You are now a passive piece of pipe. If you're sensitive, you may notice that there is energy coming in your crown and going out the front of your body. Whatever chakras are appropriate are the ones that the energy will flow through. Whatever proportion or mix of chakras is appropriate. You don't have to manage that. Just notice it happening if you can. So you're relaxed. And this works even if you can't feel the energy coming through. Uh, it doesn't matter. So just relax. And you may notice that you start to feel different as the energy comes through. If so, just notice that. And when you're doing it on your own, um, I like to just let it keep flowing until it kind of just wraps up on its own. When that person has received as much energy as serves high school, there's an automatic um, stop that happens. So we'll let it flow for a moment here. You can also just stop at any moment uh, voluntarily. That's an option you have as well if time is short. Hmm. Okay, just a moment longer for the flow and then I'll, I'll do the next step. Yeah, I'm feeling it stopping and winding down for most of us. Okay, good. Okay, so now that the flow has run its course, feel once again your physical and energy bodies and see how they feel and see if they feel any different after the flow. Okay, so before I tell you what usually happens when people do that, I'd love some actual feedback. Someone asked... Um, can you pick more than one person? Yes, uh, I routinely flow to every being in the universe all at the same time, so no limit. <laughs> so um, I'd love some feedback. Uh, Bernice, so what was your experience there? Wow, so um, my hands were felt felt quite warm. My whole body oh. felt warm and my hands felt very tingly. Oh, good. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Did you feel oh, energy yeah. flowing through them? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. excellent. Do you do you feel different now for having been the conduit? Yes. And what's the difference? Um, I, I felt more. I, I felt something in my heart space. <laughs> it's like okay. opening. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Your heart feels more open now. Is what you're saying? Yes. So does that feel better or worse than before? No, better. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Jacqueline, what yeah. was your experience? I felt tingling, and I just felt. 
really good. Oh, good. So you feel better now for having done the flow? Is yep. that what you're saying? Yep. Good. Yep. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's get one more live feedback and then I'll catch up with the chats. Thank you, Jacqueline. You're welcome. Joni, hi. I got a mild headache in my third eye. Hmm. It, okay. it was hot. Okay. Is that unusual? Uh, all kinds of things. So you're, you're saying you actually feel worse for having done the flow. Well, it, it wasn't so bad that I wanted to stop, but okay. it was all definitely right. some pressure there. So it sounds like so. there was some energy coming out of there. Out of there. So overall, um, when you get your overall feeling of how you feel now versus how you feel before you flowed, would you say it feels better or worse right now? I would say I went back to to feeling good. Okay. So the, the third I think was temporary and now it's eased off? Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. So now um, I'm going to catch up with the chat. So Laura said, I feel so warm, like love emotions. Marcy said, uh, please repeat the invocation. I really love the feeling. Thank you. I felt energized. Uh, Apurva said there was immediate real flow of energy. It's still there. My head is tingling. Laura said my head is tingling. Laura said I felt a strong flow of energy out in front of me. Sarne said I felt my body get hot and then just immense love and gratitude. Uh, Trisha said my cat decided it was a good time to come sit on me. So I'll have to try again another time. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Mark asked, so can the hollow read for others be done instead of various energy or quantum healing modalities in person and remotely? Yes, if you want to. Decide for yourself what thing is most effective and do that is what I recommend. Okay, cool. All right, so here's, so basically the feedback that happened is what I was expecting. Uh, what happens when you flow for others, you not only have the experience of the energy coming through, and again, I'm hearing a lot of noise from somebody. So um, if anyone is not muted, if you could please mute, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, so you get a little flow for yourself at the same time. So when, when the divine says, oh, they're, they're serving, they're doing high school energy for another person. You, there's a, a universal law as you give, you receive immediately. You get a little energy flow for yourself. So, uh, I like to say one of the fastest ways to feel better yourself is to flow energy to somebody else. Because you immediately get your own high skin energy automatically as your instant reward. That's not why you do it, but it's kind of a bonus, if you will. So um, just about everyone said, wow, I feel better. I felt the powerful energy. And I'll mention too, depending on how sensitive you are, you have different experiences of this. Um, you know, uh, the most extreme is I, I didn't feel anything. You know, I can't even tell the energy was coming through. Another is, yeah, I felt it coming in through me. But once it left my body, I couldn't track it. And I just felt it coming through me. Other people say, yeah, I actually felt the stream of energy going to the other person. And that's as far as it went. Uh, some people said, I actually felt the other person. And I actually empathically felt their experience of receiving the energy. And it can even go as far as I just spontaneously merged with that person and we became one being. And it felt more like a merging than a separate energy flow. So any or all of that can happen and depends on you know your level of awareness. So um, none of not, it's not a better or worse thing, but just be aware those are kind of the various gradations that can happen with a, a highest good energy flow like that with a hollow reed. Okay, so um, oh, if we have time, we'll do a really cool variation on this at the end where we literally all flow highest good energy to each other. That's really amazing. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that at the end here. So let me ask address the other questions that came in. Angela asked, so does this heal you and the other person at the same time? Uh, well, that it's not necessarily a healing process, uh, depending, uh, healing might happen. So I would say that's not the specific intent of a highest good flow with a highest good flow. You're just saying, Hey, whatever they need, let them have it. It might be healing. It might be something else. It might be more like the custom. They just kind of get a certain energy to help them out. So, uh, what we're about to do is specifically about healing that hollow reed highest good energy flow is not really you know, just for healing, but that can happen. Uh, Sonia said she got a tingling in her crown area and uh, Marcy wants the invocation again. Again, what we said, there's a lot of words to it, but what I said was, um, spirit that I am, please flow the energy through me for so-and-so's highest good to the greatest extent that serves highest good. Thank you. So that's, that's the phrasing I typically use. 
All right. So now the healing invocation, I saved this one for last because this is the one that can feel a little more challenging. So let me first, um, to give context to this, let me explain about the great onion of consciousness because healing equals awakening. For most people, and, and my experience of this, I've as a, in my individual work, I've literally worked with over 10,000 clients as an astrologer, as a shamanic healer, as a life coach. And I've done tons of energetic healing work with, with many of these people. And um, what I have observed consistently in them and in myself is if you do a good piece of shadow work, and shadow work simply means when I've got a trauma that's coming up, if instead of running from it, I turn around, I face it, and I use an effective means to heal that once and for all, then the automatic byproduct of effective shadow work is a deeper spiritual awakening. You, you can't not get it. And, and my metaphor for explaining this is what I call the great onion of consciousness. I go deeper into this in my book. Uh, you know, all this I'm getting is in the book and, and much more besides is in the book. So, so imagine your higher self as this beautiful ball of white light. Okay, a bliss, ecstasy, euphoria, it feels so good. Okay, way more awake than my human part. Okay, so that's awesome. And around it are all these dark onion layers. And these are all the unhealed wounds and traumas from this lifetime and your past lives. Okay, so all these dark layers are dimming the light. Now, the awakening is, is full on in there at the core. You know, the awakening is full on but you can't access it because of all these dark layers, okay? So logically then, the fastest way to awaken is to just peel that onion, find good shadow work tools and peel those old traumas off. And every trauma you that falls away, you got more light, you automatically have a deeper awakening because more light's coming to you. That's the, that's the idea. So, um, so therefore it's really important to have a good shadow work modality. And this healing invocation is the simplest one I know that's both effective and easy and quick that a person can do on their own, okay? Because like all the other invocations, your higher self does it for you. Your ego calls it in and relaxes and lets it run. Now, fair warning, while this is running, you may have challenging energy come up um, and it may be uncomfortable for a while. What I will absolutely guarantee you with this and all the other invocations that are in the system, overwhelm never happens. I say this with confidence. I've used the invocations for over 12 years. I've done them with thousands of people. Not once ever have I had a report of overwhelm. Does not happen. That's because your higher self is running it and it has no interest in overwhelming you. It says, man, if I overwhelm them even once, they may never use me again. They won't trust me, okay? So your higher self is clever and it says, okay, I'll just give them, I may give them an intense experience, but I'm not gonna take them over the edge. So even if you're working to heal the most horrible trauma you've ever had, you can do it safely and there is no danger of overwhelm, okay? And again, this is based, like I said, on years of experience, okay? So just to give you that comfort about that. So um, so, so to start with the healing invocation, uh, just be aware that this may involve some discomfort. Again, it's not going to be too much and it will be fairly brief. You may It may come up strongly initially and then it will diminish as the heavy energy drains away or transmutes, Okay. So um, if you're willing to do this, um, what I'd like you to do first is um, before we do this, let's top off our embodied awakening just to be safe, because if you're doing it voluntarily, you know, proactively, then I always like to start any invocation from the embodied awakened state. Okay. And someone just typed, uh, the higher self is not interested in getting fired after a single job. Hey, that's correct, Mark. <laughs> it's no fool. <laughs> so um Take a moment and let's redo the embodied awakening invocation. Um, once again, just briefly note, how do my body and energy bodies feel? Just take feel how you're at right now. Okay, good. Now say the following to your higher self out loud if you can, silently if you must. Maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. become completely passive and just let it top you off. Good. Okay, that feels pretty good for me anyway. So it feels like most of you topped off pretty quickly. So once again, if it worked, all the following is true. No mental chatter, no challenging emotion, peaceful, effortless. Done. Okay. So now, uh, first check, scan your body and and 
And I want you to notice, is there anything I feel that does not feel 100% wonderful? Is there any physical discomfort? Is there any emotional discomfort? Anything at all that feels out of whack in me right now? So notice if there any, is any such thing already there. And if there is, uh, give it a zero to 10. Zero is there's no problem at all. 10 is it's so intense, it's almost overwhelming me. So give it a zero to 10 intensity rating for how strong that challenge is. Okay, so, but some of you may not be finding anything that's worrisome. And so you can do a deliberate call up of an old trauma. Now, the only requirement is it has to be an old trauma that every time you think of it causes you emotional pain. It does not have to be the worst thing you've ever experienced, but it needs to be you know, strong enough that it's consistently painful to contemplate. And, and we're doing this in a controlled setting deliberately with the goal of maybe healing the sucker once and for all. Okay. So if you don't have a pre-existing thing to work on, or you just want to work with an old thing, uh, choose that trauma and visualize it now. I want you to remember that past incident that causes you emotional pain when you remember it and just make it as vivid as you can. And you should feel challenging emotions stir up as you do this and get it nice and juicy and strong here in this safe, controlled container with no danger of overwhelm. Okay, so now if whether you're working with the thing that was already there or you pulled one up, it's all the same from here. So now uh, feel where in your body you feel the challenging energy. It might be a pinpoint. It might be a general area. Just notice where is it? Zero to 10, how strong is it? Um, all that you need to know is it doesn't feel good and give it the number rating. That's all you need to worry about. Don't worry about what it is or how it got there. Don't get into the story. Just have the feeling. And now say to your higher self, maximum healing, that serves highest good, please. Let the words go. Now the follow-up is to hold attention where it does not feel good. And as much as possible, I want your attention on the sensation in the body. So you're right there in the area of discomfort. You're feeling it 100% with no filter. It is safe to do this. Your higher self will not allow overwhelm. Um, if the whole thing is too much, it'll only let you feel as much of it as you can handle. So your higher self is titrating and making sure you don't get too much of it. So feel completely whatever discomfort is there. Um, you may be calm and silent. Uh, it's also okay if your body shakes or vibrates or trembles. It's okay if you cry, if you make sound, if your body needs to move, you need to flail your arms or stomp your feet or whatever needs to happen to move. Let the body do what it wants to do spontaneously. Don't be a drama queen for the hell of it, but uh, if possible, let your body do what it wants to do to release. Your body's very smart. Try not to get in the way. So you're just feeling whatever you're feeling. And usually there are thoughts and images that might be swirling around. That's fine. We'll let them swirl in the background. But you're just focusing the best you can on the feeling. Um, do not focus on the thoughts. Do not focus on the images. Just put your attention on the feeling, the pure somatic sensation of what you're feeling. Now, um, you may be noticing, possibly, that there is drainage. And the usual drainage of this heavy energy is out the hands and or the feet. The, the limbs are the usual conduits for heavy energy to flush away. It goes into Mother Earth. She's happy to take this for her. This is like a chocolate snack. She loves this stuff. So just give it to Mama. She, she takes it happily. And your attention, again, should be on where does it not feel good? And you're holding attention there. And once again, you're also using the minimum effort that gets the job done. So just relax and hold, use just enough effort to feel what's happening. And you can play with that a little more effort, a little less effort, you know, just kind of go back and forth and you'll find that sweet spot of just barely enough effort that's needed to completely feel what's happening. You don't have to understand it. 
Um, no mental activity is needed. In fact, while we're doing this, there is literally no thought that can help you, no matter how helpful it seems. After you're done, you can think about it all you want. But right now, focus on the feeling, please. That is what works best for this particular technology. So right now I'm feeling a strong flush out my hands and feet. That lets me know most of you guys are feeling that too. So usually it's drainage. Now the energy can leave other ways. Sometimes it goes out the top of the head. Just let it leave however it wants to leave. Don't be picky. Just be happy it's going away. And sometimes your higher self says, you know what? I'm just going to transmute that to love and light right where it is. And it can just change to beautiful, helpful energy instead of leaving. So just let it do whatever it wants to do. Don't micromanage it. Just let your higher self take care of all that. And now my body is trembling a little bit in sympathy with you guys. So just let it, let it flush out. Again, when you're just starting to learn these, the hardest part is not helping. The hardest part is just staying passive and really letting your higher self do it. So if in doubt, just kind of relax and go completely passive and just really leave space for your higher self to do this for you. It's so much more capable at healing and awakening and all the stuff we're doing than your human could ever be. So let it run this part for you. So I'm now noticing that I'm getting some nice energy around the edges. So the typical progression of a healing round is when enough of that heavy stuff flushes out or transmutes, uh, some nice energy spontaneously starts coming. Usually I feel it around the edges of my body, on my skin. And then the nice energy slowly increases at the same time as that more challenging energy kind of fades out. So the, the heavy energy fades away, the nice energy increases. At some point they cross over and I realize, wow, I'm still in my healing process. I actually am having a stronger experience of the nice energy than the challenging energy. Um, also, I'm, I'm feeling this now that lets me know a lot of you guys are feeling it too. At some point, you notice, well, wow, my physical body now feels more like energy than solid matter. So it is usually the case during a healing round that you have this experience of my body now feels like light instead of solid matter. Still the same body, but you're perceiving it differently. So again, back to that great onion of consciousness metaphor, that onion layer is cracking, you know, cracks of light are shining through, bits and pieces are falling off of that old trauma. You know, bit by bit, that layer is uh, giving way. More and more light's coming through and we're shifting from the discomfort to the bliss. And it's, it's also very common if you let a healing invocation run its full course that you end up in a state of euphoria. You literally are moving into an altered state spontaneously. And like I said, you cannot do an effective healing round without awakening more deeply. And you get a new higher baseline of awakening as a result of doing any effective shadow work process. So I'm feeling pretty good. So it feels to me like most of you are either complete with your healing round or you're pretty close. So we'll leave just a moment longer. And by the way, when I say we're done, if you need to take a little more time, that's fine. Go ahead and just stay in your process a little bit longer, even as I start talking, if you need that, that's fine. But I felt like I, I just got to wrap up and the, 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 my guys are saying, okay, go ahead and talk. Okay. So, um, so I want you now to um, feel how you feel compared to when you started, if you just kind of worked with a pre-existing challenge that was already there, um, do you feel different now compared to when we started the healing round? Note that. If you called up a specific past trauma, I asked you to give it a zero to 10 intensity scale. And for those of you now, we're going to check our work. Remember the number you gave it previously of intensity zero to 10. And now close your eyes and bring up the same image you used before, the exact same memory of the trauma that you used previously. Bring it up again. Once again, make it uh, the same kind of intensity of memory that you had the first time. Make it vivid and strong, just like you did before. Max it out. 
And now, once again, notice your emotional response. Zero to 10, how intense is the emotional response to this memory now? So note your number. Um, what typically happens is the number is usually way lower on the same memory. Uh, sometimes it's zero. Sometimes it's, you know, not all the way down all the way, but it's better. And if you didn't get all the way to zero on it, you can then just pull another healing round. The, the additional rounds go way faster. For example, if the first round took seven or eight minutes, the second round might take a minute or two, and a third round might take 30 or 45 seconds. But you can do additional rounds, you know, on the same thing, pull it up, you know, call the healing invocation again. And, and usually that will get it down to zero pretty quickly. And I've literally had people take a, a lifelong intense trauma and do a round or two or three of this. And they literally call the memory and they can't feel any more challenge from it. Now, I can't guarantee this. Everyone's different. But I've seen that more often than not in my work with this invocation. Okay. So um, already we're going to see feedback in the chat. Lisa said lighter and less physical pain, eight down to four. Franny went from seven to three. Apurva went from eight to one. That's pretty good. I'd love to get some, some live feedback. So anyone who would like to pop in and speak, I'd love to hear your experience. What, what happened for you during that healing round? I'll, I'll go. D, hi. Um, my body was resisting when going towards the trauma mm -hmm. and uh, kept trying to distract me and everything. Yeah. The more I stayed with it, the more I stayed with it, it started clearing up. At, and at the end, if it was a 10 in the beginning, at the end, it was a 2. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done, Z. Thank you. All right. Good job. That's Thank a beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And that's a beautiful butterfly behind you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Okay. So I'll catch up with the chat. Let me see. Um, Angela says, how would you ask to remove something such as negative energy, cords, or entities you receive from others? Would you ask for maximum clearing? Uh, you could, or you could say specifically, you could do a custom invocation. Um Higher self, please completely remove this whatever energy core identity to the greatest extent that serves highest good starting now and just relax and let your higher self take care of that. So remember, you can custom invocation anything, including a healing or, or removal process. Your higher self can do all that for you. I would definitely ask and just stay passive and let your higher self be your shaman <laughs> for that kind of stuff. Totally. Uh, Apurva says, I want to know how is the healing and awakening invocations different? Does embodied awakening also, does not, does, okay. So again, um, the awakening invocation is specifically to maximize spiritual awakening. The healing invocation is specifically to clear heavy energy. Yes, of course they're related. Like I said, you can't do healing without getting an awakening. However, Usually when you call embodied awakening, there is not an obvious healing process. Now, sometimes uh, when I, when you call embodied awakening, it tries to come in and it hits an obstacle. So I do sometimes see people get a little spontaneous healing work because the higher self has to clear that thing away to fully embody you. So I do see that sometimes, but the specific focus is different. And this is actually a poor, a poor, a great opportunity for me to describe the daily maintenance process that is is uh, that I suggest people try if they're interested in this. Um, and Sarah, we'll get to your question in just a second, but let me uh, let me let me finish this thought while I've still got it. So if you want it, if these are if, if you're having good initial experience, you want to try this out here. Um, what I would recommend is first thing every morning, as soon as you can, do the embodied awakening invocation to say maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. Be passive. Again, most people who do this say it takes five or 10 seconds. Done. Move on about your business. So, and then if at any point during the day you lose it, oh, there's mental chatter, there's challenging emotion, I'm not peaceful anymore, repeat it out loud or silently. Be passive for a few seconds to let it fill you up again and refresh as needed, not on a schedule. Some days you might do it once and it lasts all day. Other times you might need to do it dozens of times a day if it's a really tough day. So just start the day with it very regularly and then just repeat if you need to refresh. Uh, and But again, let's say you do have a challenging thing happen and you do embodied awakening and it's not strong enough. I, I did embodied awakening. I did my best. I still got this challenging energy. That's when you pull out the healing invocation. Then you say maximum healing that serves highest good, please. Hold attention where the discomfort is. 
the higher self comes in, usually stirs it up, flushes it out and, and does it that way. So I like to think of it as a team. If you want to then go beyond that and you say, well, I want to be proactive with healing, even if I'm not feeling bad spontaneously, then you can do the call up the old trauma version we just did. And there's another variation called the uh, next in line healing invocation, where I'm feeling great, but I understand that if I do a healing round, it's going to flush some more stuff off and I'm going to wake up some more. So you can literally, even if you're feeling great, say maximum healing that serves highest good, please. And your higher self will automatically stir up whatever's next to be healed and flush it away. So you can let your higher self choose what to clear. So that's another way you can do it. So um, I hope, Apoorva, that gives you a little more insight into the difference between the invocations for awakening and for healing and how they kind of interact with each other. And of course, I, I give recommendations. You got free will, guys. Play with it. Try stuff. Mix it up however you want. See what works. See what doesn't. You know, make it right for you. Um, Apoorva said, yep, thank you. So Sarah, um, you wanted to speak. So Sarah, if you would unmute yourself and chime in, I'd love to hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, with this invocation we just did, I it it definitely feels um tender. Um I I sort of did uh put the focus around sort of my experience um which is around kind of not really not feeling safe you know, in my yeah. body or in the, in the world and kind of energetically or psychically. And, um, and, and so, um, you know, and it's, I think it, I, I guess I wanted to ask, um, when we hit on things that are kind of at a, that are kind of really quite primal, yeah. you know, how, how to best navigate that, um, and, you know, help, ourselves with the invocations for that. Um, but also, you know, you, you emphasized a lot focusing on somatic sensations. Mm -hmm. Um, but what if that isn't really available because it's, it feels more, I don't know, it feels like it's at a, a different, it doesn't necessarily feel like a, a physical sensation. Okay. Um, so let me ask, yeah. let me ask you that. Okay. So first off, uh, in for the first part of your question, just feel whatever you feel. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'll emphasize again, this technique works best when you let thoughts and images just be there in the background and you put your attention on feeling. So you're saying you don't have a physical sensation. Do you have any kind of feeling, even if it's not physical, when you do this? Um not sure i'm fully in touch with that it's it's almost like you know when you're it's a little bit more um i guess the image that comes to mind or the feeling that comes to mind is kind of of a child not feeling safe and okay. kind of in a little bit of that freeze right okay, sure. well so. you have you're having some kind of perception of the discomfort correct yeah so sure. just focus on whatever you're aware of you know, okay. If there's any, you know, feeling perception of any kind, any way, shape or form, do that. If all your, you know, um, most people, even if they're getting an image, there is some kind of emotional tone to that. Right. Yeah. So focus so on like fear, for instance. Yeah. So, so just feel fear. the fear. But what yeah. I would, you know, and for most people, most people feel fear like in their, you know, second or third chakra. Okay, or the lower chakras is where fear usually. So if there's a strong emotion, it's usually the heart chakra. Okay, so um, if you and but I've worked with some people that say I, I'm feeling it in my whole body. It's just everywhere. In that case, just feel your whole body. You know, wh right. wherever you're perceiving the challenge is where you put your attention. Yeah. So yeah. if that's helpful, um, and you don't have to be you know clinical. It's exactly at the spot or whatever. Just wherever you're feeling it, just put your attention there, and your higher self will go there and help you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, you know, if obviously if it's something that feels quite deep and, and, you know, how loaded, mm -hmm. you know, just you would suggest trying multiple rounds to yeah. help lessen that. Yeah. 
if you find this tool effective, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My, 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 go ahead. Sorry. And what I love about this technology, you don't have to know anything about it. I, I and many others have had profound and final healings of challenging emotions, and we didn't have a clue what it caused them. I've had mm -hmm. major, massive energy flushes and not a clue what it was. I, what I think the higher self does is, says, you know what, on that one, they're better off not knowing. <laughs> Let's just mm -hmm. clear that junk away and, and be done with it. There's It'll literally do them no good at all to have a memory of that trauma. OK, other times it's really important that you know what it was. And in those cases, your higher self will drop in thoughts or images to show you what they're clearing. OK, and in that mm -hmm. case, OK, thank you for showing me. Now I'm going to go back to feeling again. OK, mm -hmm. so um, I just want to clarify that you don't have to understand or have a memory of the trauma. You can clear it even just on the feeling level with no intellectual knowledge at all. Yeah. yeah. OK. And I also wanted to ask if you like can this have you found um that this can be used to address like infections in the body or you know a, a address physical ailments oh totally um yeah and so, yes i've had people heal all kinds of physical stuff with this um so yeah and again i uh, let me clarify i can't guarantee any particular outcome from this tool I've had many people have truly miraculous healings from it. I've had other people who tried and it did nothing. Okay. So all I can say is try it on whatever doesn't feel good. That's the only credit. It does not feel good. Try it and see what happens. And, and is there yeah. is is there a certain way to re to phrase it differently? Like, do we need to phrase it different? Like if oh. someone is wanting to address, you know, Lyme disease or something like that. You can, you, you know. Can. Oh, yeah. I mean, if basically the way I've been teaching it is that I'm assuming that you have a discomfort in the body that needs healing, but you know, Lyme disease, you know, you can say, okay, maximum healing of my Lyme disease is her highest good. And just, okay. be particular about, yeah, that would be a, a custom healing invocation. Yeah. You Got can it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great okay. question, Sarah. You, thank you, you. I love your questions. Thank you. Mary type. Amazing. Thank you. Mark said, so we can use the higher self idea invocations throughout the day to have greater mental and physical energy and be in flow state with laser focus. Yes, that is correct. So let's say that you like pulled up a past trauma. You did the healing invocation a round or two and you brought it back up and you, I've got no charge at all. This thing like may have been bothering me for years and now I remember it and I'm, I'm totally neutral. I'm not feeling any discomfort at all. Does that guarantee that you have fully and finally healed that trauma? Not necessarily, maybe. But what we can never know is what's in the unconscious. The unconscious is where we push all that stuff down that we simply are not ready for it. It would overwhelm us if it came up. And our, our consciousness is kind enough to do us that favor with that stuff. So it's possible that I have seen this for an occasion where a client you know, did a big trauma healing and they checked their work and I've got no charge at all. And later, another layer came up from the unconscious and came up to consciousness to be healed. And that's a blessing when that happens, because, yeah, I get to deal with that next level of icky stuff. And if you were able to heal the first layer, guess what? You can use the healing location and heal the second layer just the same way. So the great thing about this tool, if you find that it works for you, is you, you literally don't have to be afraid of anything in your consciousness, yeah, any old traumas, any old pains. You know, you can put your higher self to work on it. And there's a chance that it can take care of that stuff very quickly and efficiently for you. So I just wanted to, to bring in the point about you can't ever, you know, you can never be definitively sure that any trauma is definitively and finally healed. I wish, I wish I could say definitively you can, but the unconscious is the mystery zone and you just don't know what's in there. But what I can say with conviction is that if anything does come up and the healing and vocation worked on the first layer, chances are very good. It'll work on the next layer too. Okay. So, um, Mark said, awesome, spiritual Red Bull. <laughs> Apoorva says, I want to know what exactly does awakening and embodied awakening means. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, can we define awakening? Uh, let me quote the great non-dual teacher, Adyashanti. He said, I'm about to talk about awakening, which cannot be verbalized. I'm paraphrasing him, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. And I know I'm going to fail, but I'm going to fail as well as I can. 
that's the kind of spirit in which we talk about awakening. Uh, let me just say, let me describe the Russian doll idea and uh, try to put it in this perspective. So we have these nested bodies, physical body innermost, then beyond that is the emotional body, and then the mental body, then all the spiritual bodies and all the awakened states are beyond the mental body. So the difficulty in discussing awakening is the mind literally cannot comprehend or conceive it or imagine it. It is literally beyond mind. You know, Zen people talk about the finger pointing at the moon. Everyone looks at the finger, okay? So the challenge is it literally cannot be put into words. You can experience it, you can be it, um, you can flow in it, but you know, you know, even while you're in it, you can you can totally be in the experience and say, I got no words. It ain't working. Okay. So the trick of awakening is that words are always going to fall short. And you know, all kinds of spiritual teachers have have noted that. Um, what I will say is um awakening to me means I am conscious as my divinity. Um Rather than just the normal human experience, I'm experiencing myself as a separate entity from everyone else. My awakened self is in me. And well, again, uh, I guess the best answer I can give is to go back to the definition I gave earlier. When you're in embodied awakening, there's more harmony, flow, ease, and grace. Everything you're responsible for, you do more responsibly, more joyfully. Instead of having to think so much, your intuition works a lot better. You just know what to do more easily. And there's this full body euphoria that comes in. Those are the things that are obviously notable when you're in awakening and the deeper it goes, the more you move into bliss and ecstasy and extraordinary experiences that there's just no words for. You just have to be there. So uh, that's really the best answer I can give our prover. And I'm sorry if it's insufficient because words just really don't go there as far as I know. Uh, Bradshaw asked, how is this different from positive affirmations? Okay. Similar. Uh, but usually when, and in fact, I go into this in my book, I, I describe how invocations differ from affirmations and from law of attraction work. So affirmation is, I am now affirming my reality and um, they're similar, but usually the the affirmation technologies I've seen, they're all about being yang and putting it out there and I'm manifesting and I'm moving the universe to make this thing real. And it's kind of a very yang positive, my ego is making this happen kind of vibe. Whereas an invocation is like, I'm just, you know, calling in my higher self and you do it for me. My ego will rest and be completely passive in yin while the higher self takes care of everything. So that's the fundamental distinction, at least the way most affirmation systems that I have encountered work. There may be ones that work more like these invocations, but that's, I think that's a fairly uh, accurate general distinction between that. Now, again, affirmations have their place. And law of attraction definitely has its place. So, but invocations, again, the way I teach them are about invoking specific immediate state shifts where my consciousness immediately changes because of the invocation process. That's really what I focus on with those. Um, Catherine says, so much here is similar to Vipassana. I actually practiced Vipassana Buddhism for five years. I talk about that at the end of the book. And um, the similarity is after you've invoked, you are in at least the, the way of, I'm sure there's many flavors of Vipassana too, but the Vipassana I practice, you just relax, you be with everything. You allow everything. If thoughts there, you allow thought, you allow emotion, you allow experience. There's no resistance. I'm just being with what is. And that is pretty much what you do pretty much after you invoke. The difference here that I did not experience in Vipassana is the invoking of the higher self to do it for you. And there are many paths beyond Vipassana that are just about just relax and be, just experience what's going on. And yes, if you have enough patience and discipline and focus, and let's say you're doing healing work, if you just sit with the discomfort, eventually that kind of passive awareness approach can work. What I have experienced, if you then just tack on the invocation, say, hi, yourself, you take care of this for me while I do my passive awareness. My experience is the healing happens much faster than just the ego passively noting. It is the invoking of the higher self to take care of it for you that supercharges the whole thing and makes it run faster in my experience. So it really, it's kind of like Vipassana on steroids, if you will, <laughs> is my experience. Um, Mark says, as nifty as the human mind is, there is so, so, so much that it cannot begin to comprehend. I could not agree more. 
Uh, I have been profoundly humbled. I talk about this in the book too, how Benjamin has just had to rest in, wow, I am such, I'm such a low man on the totem pole as a human here. The human part of me can't even begin to grasp or experience what my higher self and the higher beings do. So I just will kind of relax and, and basically my, I like to say, I don't so much try to kill my ego as to let it be housebroken. I just say, okay, Benjamin has learned to just relax, accept its appropriate place in the great scheme. And he's learned, wow, when I just follow my intuition and let my higher self run me, things go way better than when I try to just do it all for myself, for my own intellect and ego. So Benjamin has learned that the higher self is way better at being a human than me, the human only. And I just let it run with me and I partner with it and I become one with it the best I can. Uh, Mary says, can I heal intrusive thoughts with the invocations? Uh, there actually is an invocation specifically for that. Sadly, we don't have time to do it. But if you get my book, um, I call it the two-story thought house invocation. And it is specifically to deal with intrusive thoughts. So I will refer you to that for that. I, I apologize that we just don't have time in 90 minutes to do that one as well. Joni says, is there anything we can say or do to assure the ego that it's okay to step aside? Um, again, this kind of gets into parts work. I also have been trained in internal family systems therapy, where we say we have one self and many parts. What I would say is recognize that it's a part of you resisting, not all of you. And just say to that part, um, hey, I understand your concern. I know you're watching out for me. Thank you for your concern. Would you be willing to just try this for a minute? I, I know you want to keep control. Just let's try it for a minute and see how it works. And if you don't like this, you jump in and we'll stop. So just kind of talk to the parts with love, compassion, understanding, and see if you can get them to agree. There's there's more you can do with IFS and other parts work processes, but that's a simple way you can work with that part. Um, and again, remember, like I said, it, the, the letting the higher self drive, it's instantly reversible. Tell the part, you know, let's try that. And if we don't like this, we're back in the driver's seat just like that. It's the higher self is out. It will not stay if we don't want it there. So just assure the part that it's safe to try and reversible, and that might help assuage its concern. Are you able to use these invocations for serious disorders such as dementia or schizophrenia? There's actually a whole section in my book on using, uh, I don't actually go for those, but I go for all the typical anxiety um, things. I give custom invocations for those. They possibly can help. It's worth a try. I can't guarantee that it will be the thing that cures it, but it, uh, with any ailment, any challenge at all, it's worth a try. Your higher self potentially has tremendous healing power. And I would certainly try an invocation on that and see if it's effective. Bridget, sorry to ask again, can we use the holy invocation to help those who cause suffering? If you mean by that, that people are causing suffering to you, absolutely. Uh, I call those people adversarial allies. <laughs> and the cool thing about people who trigger you is that they are showing you where you need healing, okay? So you can flow highest good energy to the person who, uh, who's doing something that upsets you, and that will only cause good for the whole situation. And often doing that will kind of stir up in you whatever your trauma is that they are triggering. And then if you are flowing to them and you just go, oh, I'm getting stirred up because I'm doing this, then follow it up with a healing invocation and then let your higher self flush out whatever got stirred up as you flowed highest good energy to the person who caused suffering. I'm assuming here, Bridget, that when you be the, those who cause suffering, that they're causing you suffering. And generally, you can flow to anyone at all you want to. There's no, no restriction. Um, oh, she's thinking, I'm thinking global leaders who are causing suffering for the world. Thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely, you can flow to you know, anyone who's you think is, is a bad actor and highest good energy, again, will only serve highest good, whatever that may be. Yeah, again, flow to anyone you feel called to flow to. Mark says, LOL, the higher self is way better at being a human. I love that. Uh, and someone else typed, just to recap, is the healing invocation worded the exact same way as the embodied awakening, except you say maximum healing that serves highest good. And do you do it after you do the embodied awakening? Yes. Again, this is a template maximum fill in the blank that serves highest good. You can plug in embodied awakening. You can plug in healing. You can plug in the particular custom thing you're calling in. So yes, it is just a formula. Maximum fill in the blank that serves highest good, please. Um, and you, yes, optimally, 
you would do the healing invocation after doing embodied awakening if you can. However, there may be times when you just are all stirred up and you got everything up in the air and you cannot do an effective embodied awakening invocation. You can't get to the peacefulness. That's fine. Just do the healing invocation anyway. But if you're doing the healing invocation voluntarily, like you're doing, I'm calling up a past trauma. I'm asking for a next in line healing. Yeah, I would definitely do embodied awakening first there when you're doing it voluntarily. So, um, wow. Uh, copy of the recording. Um, now, again, I don't know what the meetup does. I don't know if they post recordings or not. They're certainly welcome to do that. Um, I post recordings inside my Awakening Plus membership. And um, so if you're a, a member of Awakening Plus, um, you can do it that way. Again, that's awakeningplus.com to check that out. You can do it for a dollar for 30 days to check it out. Um, so that's how you would get a copy of the recording. Uh, Mark says, can the higher self team up with our guardian angel to really take over the driver's seat of our life? Absolutely. Call in all the allies you want. Yeah. The more divine allies you want to bring in, that's a wonderful way to do it. Again, but I also have to emphasize, I really strive for simplicity on this. You know, all you need to do this is your higher self and the invocation. You don't need any bells and whistles or any other stuff. If you would like to bring in other divine beings, that is fine. Again, please feel free to experiment. This is not a rigid rule-based system. This is just take it and do what you want with it. Okay, play, experiment, do what you want. And just I just encourage you to really note the results and be real kind of scientific with it. So, okay, uh, when I do it this, it works better. When I do that, not so well. And I would recommend just doing the forms you find that work better for you. And Bradshaw says, are there any other holistic techniques I can look at in regard to healing an old physical wound on top of the healing invocation? Oh my God, there's so many. Um, I, I, There's just so many, I can't even begin to answer that. There's hundreds of those. So um, I would just say whatever holistic technique um, you want to go to for physical healing, just there's just so many, I can't even begin to list them all. Angela says, what's the difference between the higher self, guardian angel, and spirit guides is essentially all aspects of your higher self. Um, they There is a lot of overlap, I believe, but I, you know, when I say higher self, I'm thinking specifically of you one level up. Um, guardian angel, I perceive as a separate being who's kind of assigned to you outside of the higher self. Spirit guides, you know, are other beings beyond the guardian angel. So they're all kind of working as a team, but I do see all three of those as distinct beings. However, and the bottom line, it's all God, folks. There's only God here. There's only one of us. Uh, like the great Ramana Maharshi, the great guru said when someone asked him, oh, great guru, what do we do it about other people? He says, there are no other people. <laughs> he was speaking from that oneness kind of, it's all just one. So it's all depend on the level of consciousness. If you're just a, an unawakened human, it all looks like separate stuff. If you're profoundly awakened, it all looks like one thing. So just levels of distinction based on where you're conscious at. And Mark says, fun time in the mad higher self scientist lab. Absolutely. Now we're nearly at our 90 minute mark. And I do want to do one last process before we wrap it up. And I, and I just want to, I want to thank uh, Carlo and everyone else who has been hosting this. I'm having such a great time and uh, so honored to be here working with you guys. So I want to do what I mentioned this earlier. I want to do the Hollywood invocation where we all flow to each other. This is really fun. I've done this a lot in my awakening plus. So one last time, let's uh, fire up the embodied awakening first. So um, one last time, say to your higher self, maximum embodied awakening. That serves highest good, please. Give it a sec to lock in, be totally passive. Beautiful. Okay. So if you'd like to be part of this, repeat after me speaking to your higher self, uh, spirit that I am, please flow the energy through me to serve the highest good of everyone doing this event, live or on the recording. To the greatest extent that serves highest good as I simultaneously receive highest good energy 
from everyone else on the call. Starting now, thank you. This or something better. That's all the words, let them go. Obviously that's way too much for an ego to do, so it's not gonna do it. Relax into complete passivity and just let it run itself. This is a vast geometrical thing happening, it's beautiful. So if you'll just chill out and let it run, you will feel all kinds of awesome energy coming around. So without even trying, you are flowing a beam of energy to every single person on this call, live or on the recording, and you're simultaneously receiving high skin energy from them all at the same time. So let's just relax and let this run for a minute. <laughs> Our higher selves are having a great time here. <laughs> They're saying, we. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some pretty strong bliss here. Relax and enjoy this nice energy. And they're they're winding it down. So what's happening now is this sweet energy is being brought into your physical body. Only energies that serve your highest good, by the way. And uh, they're upgrading your human self to a little bit deeper awakening. So I, I'm, I feel like we're back in our bodies now. I'd like you to note, do I feel different physically, energetically than before we did that little uh, sharing exercise? I feel distinctively different. I feel more buzzy, more awake, more euphoric. Um, but I always do after I do that particular thing. <laughs> okay, so any last feedback? Um, we're but just about at 90 minutes, and I do need to honor the the time that I honored. Uh, Laura says, I feel light and buzzy. Mark says, huge romp and stomp and high heels kick and gratitude to Benjamin and Carlo and all the salty chat nuts. <laughs> I like your style, Mark. Brittany says, more buzzy and awake now for sure. Um, cool. Uh, Monica, did you want to share something? I, I would, Benjamin. Thank you. Um, I first found you or heard of you when you did a, a show with Marilyn Harper. Oh, yeah. And it's a couple months ago now. And I've been in vocations every single day since then. And I recently joined your plot, your Awakening Plus group. Uh -huh. I did a bunch of invocations or a bunch of your, you know, play, replays in the archive last night. This Folks, if you're not doing this every day, you are missing out. This is so powerful. I I love you, Benjamin. I absolutely love that you have brought this work through, and I love that it came through ayahuasca. Um, <laughs> just so grateful. I feel so wonderful. And I know that, I mean, it really started, everything started to really shift for me into high gear, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, when I started doing your work. So thank you, oh. thank you, thank you. Wow. What a delightful <laughs> surprise. Thank you for sharing that, Monica. <laughs> I You're swear welcome. I didn't set that up. Uh, <laughs> that was not a... <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and Apurva says, thank you, Benjamin. I came across your book last week, and since then I started using the invocations. Oh, um, also we got some feedback on the process. Briefly, um, Trisha said that last one was amazing. Sorry, Sari says, thank you so much. Bridget, feel very mellow and pain-free. Thank you. Mary says, I felt huge energy with that one, both coming and going. Thanks from Catherine. And Carlo put my website in there, astroshaman.com. That's the website where you can access everything. Uh, and again, just as a reminder, if you want to check out the book, uh, again, if you want to go on the cheap, you can get the ebook for $3.99. All the other formats are available for various prices, the paperback, the hardback, the audiobook. Um, if you want to check out the membership that Monica was just talking about, that's awakeningplus.com, awakeningplus.com. Again, if you want to try it, it's a dollar for 30 days to try it. And just to be totally upfront, if you continue after that, it's usually $19 a month. If that's too much, ask for the scholarship rate. You can get it for $9 a month. And people tell me that it's worth quite a bit more than that, but I like to keep it affordable because I like to help people go and awaken, even if they don't have a lot of money. So 
Um, I'm trying to, you know, spread the good word and the good energy and the good teachings the best I can. Uh, I'm again, so grateful to Carlo and everyone else here on this meetup for allowing me to come in as a guest presenter. I've had a wonderful time. Y'all are beautiful folks. We've co-created this lovely field and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. And I think that's all that I need to say here. Uh, Carlo, did you want to jump in with any, uh, Yes. Uh, what are comments? Um, yeah. Benjamin, um, in your book, you go into much more detail with these invocations in different yes. forms and varieties. Yeah, I do. Okay. And on your website, what services do you offer? I offer astrology, shamanic healing, and life coaching as one on one services. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. My bald head supports right. my hats. <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to say, Carlo, or anyone else who's a host here? I really appreciate you coming and hope to have you back in the future. Yeah, I've had a, I'd love to come back. This was so delightful. Thank you, Carlo. Okay. All right. Big blessings to everyone. Good night, folks. Thanks again for showing up and uh, big blessings and endless awakening to you all. <laughs> so that's the event I recorded. And here's the outro for this podcast. My book just celebrated its one year anniversary. The ebook and paperback versions were published on October 3rd, 2022. I published the hardcover a few months later, and the audiobook came out last month. My book hit number one in 11 Amazon categories the week it came out. As of October 8, 2023, it was number seven in the spiritual healing category, number eight in new age mental and spiritual healing, and number 14 in spiritual growth self-help. I am so grateful it's still selling so well after more than a year. As a reminder, it's called Instant Divine Assistance, your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. Click the link in the show notes to check it out on Amazon or read it in Kindle Unlimited. Also, my Awakening Plus online membership supports your individual healing and awakening and global spiritual awakening and lets you make meaningful connections with like-minded spiritual seekers. Hundreds of satisfied members make up our supportive online community. Awakening Plus members can choose from about a dozen monthly Zoom calls. We also have a constantly growing archive of over 600 life-transforming events supported by an easy-to-use best-of guide. Not only that, there are three major courses so far and plenty of other benefits to help speed up your personal evolution. Click the link in the show notes to learn more or go to awakeningplus.com. That's awakening, P-L-U-S dot com. Thank you for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and we are wrapping up. Please leave me a five-star rating, review, or comment wherever you get this episode so that others can also awaken, heal, and thrive. And be sure to click the link in the show notes if you haven't already for a chance to win one free year of my Awakening Plus online membership. Thanks again for spending this time with me. I wish you infinite blessings. <laughs>